thing you know. Don't worry, I'll pay you all the attention first. the minutes aren't you yeah stay at my top because of your fluff oh i've got fluff in my tea thanks misty my name's Michelle and this is my channel Sewing Bunny and welcome to my video which is my sew along for the wardrobe by me whisper blouse so um, in my December sewing plans I put a vote up for you guys to let me know which out of my sewing plans you wanted to have the sew along for and the deer and doe jacket and the whisper blouse came out neck and neck so I decided to do two sew alongs so I've already done the deer and doe jacket um, in another sew along and then now I'm doing the whisper blouse so I'm doing this actually in um, conjunction with Felicity Fabrics because they did supply me the fabric and the pattern for this sew along um, so they gave that to me for free in exchange for a review but I'm actually doing a sew along so you can actually see every single step of the way so the whisper blouse the reason why i went for this one is this is a uh, pattern that's actually designed for double gauze fabric and i do have some double gauze in my stash and also the fabric which um, felicity fabric supplied to me and i just thought it would be a really nice kind of casual kind of top double gauze is a really nice soft fabric and uh, yes yeah, so i think it'll be quite snuggly as well so you get some different views on here so you can see you have a dress version you've got top versions uh, you've got some different necklines so you've got just a normal um, kind of crew neck here you've got a slightly lower neckline here with a little button placket you've also got different sleeves so you've got uh, different lengths of sleeve plus you can do a roll-up sleeve put it like here um, which you can turn up with a little tab so I'm thinking the version that I want to do, I do love this kind of little rolled up um, sleeve. So I'm going to do that. But then I also want to do this little button down placket just because I think that's going to look really, really nice. So that's the version that I'm going to be doing. And um, I need to just check now what size I'm going to cut. Now, the sizes are on the back here. However, I have opened this and I've opened the little booklet as well and I have to say the measurements on the outside of the packet and the ones in the booklet are slightly different I mean only slightly so for instance um, if you have a look on here you've got a size 8 says that the um, bust is a 36 but in the booklet it says your body measurements for a size 8 bust is 36 and a half so I don't quite know kind of what's kind of gone on there I mean that just kind of says imperial measurements it doesn't actually say body measurements so whereas this one does say body measurements so I'm going to go from the one in the booklet because this does have the body measurements and the actual garment measurements as well whereas um this one on the outside doesn't so yeah just be aware of that just slightly I mean we're only talking half an inch but um, yeah it's just something I thought I'd point out so I'm having a look at the um, measurements and I'm just reading this little section at the top here and it does say to find your size based on the chart below for this pattern you should choose the size that fits your chest body measurement so go for the bust measurement um, and also, I, I really like it because it actually says um, the pattern is drafted for 5'8 height. I'm 5'8, so this should be perfect lengthwise for me. But it's really good, I think, that they've put the height on there because, you know, if you are taller or shorter, then you know you might need to lengthen or shorten it. So really happy that they've put that on there. And so the body measurements 
Uh, my bust is a 36. I've got a waist of 30 and my hips are 40. So I'm having a look on uh, these measurements here. So for a size eight, as I mentioned earlier, it says 36 and a half. As I say, I'm a 36, uh, but the size six down uh, from that is 35 inches and the size up from that is 38 inches. So I'm going to go bang on for a size eight, which is a 36 and a half. Now, it does say that the waist measurement is 28.5, but this garment is designed with ease in it. You can see from the, uh, the shape of it, it's not meant to be a tight fitting garment at all. So I'm having a look at the finished um, measurements as well, just to make sure. And the bust on the size eight um, finishes at 38 inches. So yeah, that's, um, you know, two inches of ease for me. So absolutely fine on there. And um, yeah, so I'm happy with those measurements. So I'm going to trace out the pattern. So they give you the A0 sheets in the packet and they're on quite nice good paper on there so yeah I'm gonna get tracing the size 8 and then I will come back to you once I finish that I've cut out all of my uh, pattern pieces now. You just have to be a little bit careful which one you select to cut out because the um, bodice has a version A and a version B. The version A is kind of like one pattern piece, but then the version B, the top half, you have to trace separately. And it confused me um, for a little bit. So, what I've done is I actually, um, I traced out both and I've uh, come up with a little um, kind of
kind of pattern uh, paper piece hack, if you will. Um, so this is the pattern piece. Ignore this bit here. That's the pattern piece which you cut out. But I needed this um, pattern piece. So what I've done is I've folded along the line where you add it, still kept on version A, attached version B. So if I want to make version A, I can fold version B out the way and use that pattern piece. Or if I want to use version B, I fold version A underneath and put version B out. So yeah, I'm quite proud of myself that I kind of thought of that. I'm sure I'm not the first person to have done that. But yeah, I kind of thought that's really good. So now I've got both versions on one pattern piece. So yeah, I've done that for the front and the back. There are two different um, sleeves you can cut out. There's sleeve A and sleeve B. I needed sleeve A, so I managed to do that. So I think I've got everything sorted now. And now I need to cut out the fabric. So the fabric that I've got, as I mentioned, this came from Felicity Fabrics in exchange for my uh, review of the top. But as I say, I'm doing the sew along. Um, and it is this double gauze with these beautiful gold flecks in there. Absolutely lovely. Now I have washed this. I was a bit nervous because I wasn't sure if these gold flecks were gonna like uh, come off or if they were gonna fade, but I washed it on 30 degrees and let it air dry and it came out beautifully. I haven't ironed this um, because the pattern does actually say on the back, um, it is, uh, you will need double gauze fabric, ideally the crinkled kind. So as you can see here, this is the crinkled kind here. And actually it hasn't, like some double gauzes, when you put them in the wash, they can kind of really shrink and get really creasy. Whereas this one is actually, it hasn't really like bunched up that much. And I do like the look of that. So I'm thinking, well, if this is how it washes normally, I'm gonna leave it like this because when I then pop it in the wash once I've made it, I won't need to worry about it shrinking anymore. I hope that kind of makes sense, what I mean there. <laughs> so yeah, I really like this. It is so soft, so nice. So I can't wait to get this uh, cut out. So yeah, I'm going to lay it all out, get it all cut out, and then I will come back to you. just started absolutely chucking it down so I've had to put the um, the light on and um, yeah put a hoodie on because yeah suddenly really dropped in temperature um, so just so you know on the instructions I couldn't actually find any um, uh, kind of layouts or anything um, a lot of instructions do tell you kind of like layouts this one doesn't it doesn't bother me because I very rarely usually you know kind of follow the recommended uh, kind of pattern piece layout so it didn't bother me but just in case you're wondering it's not in there um, and so I've done all of that and also yeah I've cut out some interfacing as well so the uh, the sleeve tabs um, I've cut out the interfacing for that and also for the placket as well I've cut out the fabric and interfacing for that so I'm presuming that the first step is going to be to iron on the interfacing, possibly. 
Um, oh, no, actually it doesn't. Probably tells you to do it at a later stage. Okay, so, um, okay, right, step one, it actually tells you what you should start doing, but then it says view B, skip to step eight. So let me step there. Okay, so step eight, view B. Sew the front and back together at the shoulder seams, right side facing. So that's nice and straightforward. Ah, okay, right. Sorry, slightly misread that. So you have to do step one and then um, view B, skip to step eight. So step one is actually grab the uh, back pieces together. So this is the back pieces and you want to do um, right sides together. So there we go, we've got right side up there, and then this one right side over the top. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch all the way down there to make one full back piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use um, just a standard straight stitch all the way down and then I'm going to finish it off with my overlocker. So I'll do that and then I'll come back to you. Right, so that's that step done. So I've sewn the two back pieces together. So created one piece and then I have overlocked in the middle. Now you may notice that I'm not using a um, matching overlocking thread. I'm using rainbow overlocking thread <laughs> just because, yeah, I love the rainbow overlocking thread. I'm really into it at the moment. And um, yeah, you can't see it through this because it is a dark color. So I think it would be just really nice to kind of see kind of on the inside just for me. So yeah, I'm really liking that. And hopefully you guys can actually see it a little bit better as well. Okay, so that is that step. And now it's because I'm doing version B, now I have to move on to step eight. And uh, that is where we sew the front and the back pieces together. So this is the back bit that we've just done. So that one I'm gonna lie right side up and then get my front piece, which is the piece that's uh, on the fold. Open that out. So right side to right side. And then it's asking you to sew along the shoulder seams. So again, I'm going to stitch those just with a straight stitch and then overlock those as well. So I'll come back to you once that's done. So that's done at the shoulder seams. So now we've done uh, up the back and the shoulder seams there. So we have the start of a bodice. So the next step, uh, this one, probably a slightly scarier step out of probably most of them, is you have to cut a line. So this is the front bit. So this is the bit which we had on the fold. So this is the front and you have to cut a line down to uh, the marking. Now on the pattern piece, Because there are two um, placket lengths, there's a short placket length and a long placket length. I'm doing the long placket length, which is uh, three buttons. I think the short placket length is two buttons, but I like the look of the three. So on the pattern piece, there's, can you see I've done this little line that says long? So I've got to line that up in the center and I'm gonna use my chalk pen to make a mark and draw a line down the center, and then I need to cut down to that marking. Now, I have double checked that the um, placket, I've kind of lined that up against it, just in case, making sure that it definitely fits, and yeah, absolutely fine. So that gives me plenty of uh, wiggle room in that. So that's fine. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. And then I have just noticed, it hasn't actually said anywhere 
um, at a stage to iron on the interfacing to those pieces. And I did look further back in the um, kind of like, I would guess like the tips area, which is tells you like what the seam allowance is and what notions you need, etc. And it does actually say view B iron um, interfacing to the wrong sides of the front placket pieces. Um, so what I'm going to do is because it doesn't tell me at any point in the instructions to do it, I'm going to cut that. Then I'm going to iron on those interfacing pieces and then I'll come back to you. Right, so I've done that step. So you can probably see here, I don't want to stretch it out too much, but can you see I've made that cut there at the front? And then I've also interfaced all of my pieces. So that is uh, the sleeve tabs. So all four I've interfaced. And then these are the plackets. So again, both of there, just because I think, yeah, you need that little bit of extra stability, I think, for those. So that is that bit done. So let's have a look at the instructions and see what is next. Okay, so now it is probably my <laughs> most dreaded bit. Um, so the next bit is the binding. Now this um, part of the pattern piece is a um, bias binding. So I just used the same fabric because, um, well, if you've ever used double gauze, it's quite an unusual fabric, it's quite bouncy. So I didn't want to use like a cotton um, bias binding or anything. I think if you're going to use double gauze, I'd probably say use binding out of the same fabric because then it kind of moves in the same way. So I've done that. Um, for anyone that's watched my channel for any length of time may know that I hate bias binding. It never really goes too well for me. So fingers crossed this one goes okay. So um, the first step is to grab your bias binding and what you want to do is so uh, wrong side up. Let me try and move this out the way for a second. So yeah, wrong side up. You want to turn over one centimetre of that and then iron that down. So you're just left with um, like a little gap at the top on there um, so I'm going to go out and do that now because this does have these little gold flecks in I am going to use a pressing cloth just on the safe side because I don't know if they'll come off on my iron or anything like that so yeah I'm going to turn one edge up one centimeter and then come back and then it's down to start attaching it okay so that has now all been pressed so now it's going to be attaching it to the neck. So in the instructions, uh, sew the binding to the neckline, right sides facing, and then understitch the seam allowance to the binding. So the pictures are quite clear, I think, on these ones. So that folded edge you leave on the um, on the outside, and you're sewing that uh, single layer on there. So. Yeah, I'm going to get that all done and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've pinned my bias binding onto the neckline and I'm hoping uh, this will show it um, well enough for you. So you can see there, this is the um, bit that I've just folded over and this is just the single layer that I've then attached to the um, outside. So I'm now going to sew all along that bit that I've pinned and then um, I think it says then again to turn it in and understitch the seam allowance to the binding. So once I've sewn that, then I'm going to understitch it and then I'll come back to you for the next step. Okay, so I've done that. So I've understitched all around the collar. So you might be able to see uh, 
I'm not sure, just there. Um, so now kind of like, so the binding is kind of on the outside. So now what we need to do is actually turn that binding in and then um, sew all around the edge by one centimetre to give it that nice clean finish and keep that binding on the inside. So I'm gonna get around and pin all of that, uh, get it sewn up, and then I will show you the finished uh, bit. that's um, the binding done and I think actually I've done an all right job with it as you can see that there it all looks reasonably neat even on the inside so yeah I'm quite happy with that <laughs> so yeah fingers crossed it's not going to stretch out or anything I think we'll be all right okay so the next step is to actually get that placket put on so it looks like I've got to get so these are the um, placket pieces um, which I've interfaced so it looks like you've got to fold so you need to um, fold it in half uh, lengthways um, across like that right sides together and then sew down one of the sides and then you open it back out and then you'll be left with a placket, but with a nice, neat bit um, at the uh, bottom. And then you would need to uh, just finish off this raw edge. So I'm gonna do that with my overlocker. So I'm gonna do that for both of those. And then it's a case of putting buttonholes in one of the sides and buttons on the other. Not to actually put the actual buttons on, but I think one side you just need to put the button holes on. So I'm gonna do those steps and then I'll come back to you. I've gone out and um, ironed those and you can probably see here um, I've made some markings on both of these so one side will have the buttonholes and obviously one will have the actual buttons so it illustrates it quite well on the instructions so if I lie these two pieces down so the overlocked sides are along these edges and the bottom and then that folded edges along the top so this side needs to have the actual button holes and then this side will have the actual buttons on later so on this side I'm going to then now create three of those button holes and I'll show you the buttons that I'm going to be using for this just uh, let me find them so the buttons I'm using I think I just got these from eBay so, you know, I think you can probably pick them up um, anywhere. They're just gold, shiny buttons. So um, I thought that they would go nicely with all these gold flecks kind of on there, if you can imagine that. So you get like the shiny kind of gold flecks and then the shiny buttons. So those are the ones I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna judge the buttonhole size, obviously on the size of this button. So I'm going to uh, do those buttonholes and then I'll come back to you to go through the actual attaching of the plackets onto that uh, front.
I've done my buttonholes and I'm happy with those. I don't know how well those are gonna show up. Um, so I use a buttonhole chisel and I also do fray check as well. And I do fray check before I um, cut out the buttonholes and after just to um, prevent any fraying at all. Um, if anyone is interested in anything that I use, like tools or anything like that, all of my sew alongs will always have a um, link to some tools that I use, things like that in the description box. They are all Amazon affiliate links, um, just means I get a very small percentage of the sale, but it doesn't cost you any more. But I know a lot of times when I do sew alongs, people in the comments do say, oh, you know, what tracing paper did you use? Or where did you get your buttonhole chisel from or something? And um, just to let you know, it's all linked down in the description box below. OK, so now we've done the buttonholes. Now it's um, a case of attaching those um, pieces to the bodice. So I'm just having a look on the instructions. So, OK, it's just a case of um, lining these up. So this is my uh, right side up and here is the section that I have cut down the middle. So the one with the buttonholes that I've just created. So this one um, has the overlocked edge here and here and that lies down on um, this side of the shirt like so that way. And then you stitch all the way down up until one centimetre from the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just to make sure that I get that right, I'm going to mark one centimetre um, just there so I know when to stop stitching. And again, same with the one for when you actually sew on the buttonholes. Again, that one goes um, on the other side of the shirt with the overlocked edge in the middle. So both of those pieces have the overlocked edge in the middle and then the folded um, uh, fabric edge is on the outside. So stitch those together, leaving one centimetre at the bottom and then I'll come back to you. see from there I've got um, both pieces on the front so the next step is it's asking you to cut out kind of like um, an upside down V shape um, at the bottom here so I've got to turn it inside out so let's do that now okay so there we go that's the um, inside so on this um, bit here we've got to cut a little um, upside down um, V you can just see there and then once you've um, cut that shape then you'll need to line up both of these to kind of make it match both sides um, so once it's kind of nice and flush then it says to give it a good press and then to top stitch around the outside. So for instance, like on these bits, I think it's to top stitch uh, along here so that it secures this kind of flat. So you do that down the edges and then along the bottom, but of course you leave that bit at the top free. And it's to make sure that you definitely leave both of those two bits so that they can open up. So you're just top stitching around the edges so that it secures it in place. So I'm gonna get on and do that now and show you that bit afterwards. So before I do any uh, top stitching, I thought I would just kind of show you um, that kind of section. So once you cut out that V shape, you can kind of like then overlap them and then line them up. It's one of those things you probably, once you're doing it, it'll kind of make sense. But ultimately, I've pinned it here so you can see how I'm lining it up. So you can see there, it lies all nice and flat there. And then on the inside, you can see there that those two pieces line up as well. 
so you can see it all fits in nicely so that it is nice and flat on the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give that a nice good press. I've got glass headed pins so no chance of melting <laughs> and then I'm going to top stitch. Oh hello Misty. <laughs> um, I'm then going to top stitch all the way around like so. Thank you Misty. Um, so yeah I'll do that and then I'll come back to you. I've uh, top stitched all around so all around this bit on the bottom and um, then the other side as well and it is quite easy if you do line them up and then uh, do your top stitching around then that's probably the easiest way of doing it but just make sure that when you're uh, top stitching along this side you're not catching this section at any point you're just uh, going down that line so that is that bit done. So the next bit is just to attach the buttons onto this side. So I have already placed some dots, but I will just make sure that I line this back up again and just check that those dots are definitely in the right place because you never know, things do shift about sometimes. So I'm gonna put those buttons on and then I will show you once I've done that. I'm super pleased with how they look. Everything looks like it's lining up really well. So uh, yeah, Misty's uh, calmed down a little bit. If she doesn't get her cuddles when she wants them, then yes, she can be very stroppy. <laughs> now she's chasing a towel. <laughs> okay, so um, let's have a look and see what the next step is. Okay, so it does say um, for the sleeves, it does say uh, go, Misty, it's your tail. Um, for sleeves A, you need to go to step four and for sleeve B, you need to go to step five. I'm using sleeve A, so I need to go to step four. Okay, so the first thing is to actually uh, do tabs. So... Um, we've just got to put right sides together on these tabs. So you've got the long edge and then the pointy edge. So you're going to do right sides together on those. And what you're going to do is you're going to stitch around the outside and then over to the point. But you're going to leave this edge free so that you can turn it the right way out. So you're going to do that on both of those. And then also mark the buttonholes on those as well, which is on the pattern piece uh, on this bit here. So mark the buttonholes and then make the buttonholes. So I'm going to do that next and um, yeah, I will come back to you afterwards. So I've turned out both of my tabs on there. So I'm going to give them a nice press now. And then um, the instructions do say to top stitch all the way around and um, also put the buttonhole in. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to leave it uh, there for today and I'll pick this up uh, tomorrow because I think it's just these um, adding in the sleeves 
doing the side seams and hemming and um, yeah it's uh, getting a little bit later now so I want to um, start dinner soon so I'll do that so I will uh, check in with you tomorrow bye hi everyone welcome to day two of the whisper blouse sew along so I left you where I was at the stage where I just finished the button placket there and um, I'm working on the uh, sleeve tabs. So I've done those sleeve tabs now and all I need to do is I need to um, put the buttonhole um, on there and also top stitch around. So yeah, pop that buttonhole in and then um, top stitch all the way around and then I've got to then line it up on the sleeve. So I'll come back to you when I'm at that point. sewn the tabs with the top stitching I don't know if that's going to show up at all and I have also got my little buttonhole there as well so both tabs done so now it's on to the sleeve so I just had a quick look at the instructions so there is a marking on the uh, sleeve piece which is where the button goes and also uh, the position of where the tab goes so what you need to do is actually mark it on both sides so the right side and the wrong side so if I just take one of these sleeve pieces so first off I'm going to do uh, right side down so that that means I've got the wrong side facing up I'm going to line my pattern piece over the top so that it all marks up I'm then going to mark where um, that position is and it's actually on the wrong side that you would then attach the tab. So we've got a raw edge still on there. So it does say to turn that over. So you've got a nice clean edge and then that turned over piece will then go on the wrong side of the fabric. So I hope that kind of shows there. So you pop that on. So it means that when you roll up your sleeve, then the tab will come out. Once you've done that, you then flip it over and then you attach a button to the right side just where you've kind of stitched it there so um, I'm going to do that next for both sleeve pieces is the sleeves um, for the tabs bit done so you can see I've got a button on the right side and on the wrong side I have the tab so now it is a case of attaching the actual sleeve to the bodice so if I grab the bodice so we're going to be doing uh, the right side up and there are some notches uh, just to look out for. So there's like a double notch on the back and there is a single notch on the front section. And then of course you've got your uh, seam 
uh, for your shoulders. So you need to find the corresponding sleeve. So that's uh, one, that one. So this one um, has got the notch at the top, which will line up with that shoulder seam. Then you've got the uh, two notches on this bit, which lines up with the two notches on the back. And then the single notch lines up with the single notch on the front. So you do have to kind of ease that sleeve in, but I quite like sewing on the, uh, like inserting a sleeve on the flat, because I do find it's quite easy. So I'm going to uh, pop that in, I'm going to um, uh, stitch it with a straight stitch and then overlock that seam. And um, then I'll come back to you. So sleeves are in. I'm showing you the uh, inside out <laughs> there so you can see that the sleeves are attached. So the next step is to sew along the side seams. So just need to line up um, the sleeves and the bottom of the bodice. There you go, so you can probably see that shape there. So now what we need to do is to sew all the way uh, down the side seams and then what I'll do is, again, sew straight stitch and then I'm gonna overlock with my lovely rainbow overlock thread. And then once I've done that, it is just down to the hemming. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna sew up the side seams and then I will come back to you. that is all the side seams done so we have the top all I need to do now is just hem it so the instructions did say to um, maybe overlock and then turn up a quarter inch and um, uh, do that as a hem but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a double fold hem I have tried it on and I've got enough um, kind of uh, room to do that so yeah I'm just going to uh, turn the fabric over once and then turn it over again and then top stitch it. So I'm gonna be doing that on the bottom and on the sleeves, even though I probably will be rolling up the sleeves uh, most of the time anyway, because I've put the little button on. It's still nice to have the option if I did wanna have it loose. So yeah, I'm gonna do that and then I will come back to you. are finished <laughs> there we go I will put it on and model it for you very very shortly 
so you can see me when I'm doing my uh, my twirls. So yeah, I am really, really happy with this. I have already tried it on and I love the way that it feels. It's really, really lightweight, but really cozy at the same time. Um, so I think this would be absolutely brilliant for all times of year, because I think even in like the winter, it's kind of warm enough because it's got that snuggly double gauze kind of feel then it keeps you warm, but yet because it is so lightweight and it is all 100% cotton, then in the summer, it's gonna be really nice and light and breezy. So I think I'm gonna get so much wear out of this. So I'm really happy with uh, all the instructions. I have to say this lovely little instruction booklet was really easy to follow. Um, I know that it is classed as a um, easy pattern I do agree with that. I mean, the only things I would say that are a little bit difficult, possibly for some people, could be the binding on the neck uh, line. And also you always have your buttonholes and things on there. So, uh, but the placket was really easy to insert. And um, as I say, the instructions are brilliant. So I'm going to try it on. I'm gonna give you some twirls in it. And um, yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts because I know a lot of people haven't used double gauze before or maybe aren't a fan of double gauze. So I'd love to know what you think of it. Okay, I'm gonna pop it on, do some twirls and um, yeah, I will speak to you all in my next video. I really hope you enjoyed the sew along and I'll speak to you soon. Take care, bye.